What's up, everybody? I'm Jaspreet Singh, and the housing market is going through one of the biggest shifts in our economy right now because for the first time since before the pandemic even started, we are finally starting to see the supply of homes increase. The reason why this is so important to understand is because there are two factors that contribute to housing prices, supply and demand. And for the last couple of years, we have seen very low supply mixed with very high demand, which has pushed the price of real estate up. I'm putting these arrows on top of these things because this is where we have been in the past. Supply refers to the number of homes available for sale and demand refers to the number of people that actually wanna buy a home. So when you have a ton of people that wanna buy a few homes that are available for sale, well now the buyers are gonna to have to compete against one another to buy these limited homes. So now the buyers are now going into bidding wars, they're fighting each other by offering more money to buy homes, which pushes home prices up. There's been three leading factors which have contributed to the abnormally high amount of demand that we've seen for the past couple of years. The first one is the most obvious, which is the super low mortgage rates that we've seen. Before 2022, we were seeing the lowest mortgage rates in the history of American time, which means that if you wanted to go out and buy a home, your mortgage was significantly cheaper. And so many people wanted to take advantage of these cheap mortgage rates by going out and buying a home. The second thing was people wanted to now work from home and have a home where they could actually work from home. Meaning people had smaller homes and now they wanted to upgrade, have a home with an office or another bedroom because now they were spending so much more time in their homes. So people wanted to buy a home to do that. And third, people wanted to move out of their big cities because either you had the ability to work from home or you realized that you didn't want to pay $5,000 a month to live in New York, which is now their median rent. But people didn't want to pay this big money to live in big cities because now you can take the income that you're getting and move somewhere cheaper. By the way, little mistake there. I said $5,000 is the median rent. I meant to say that $5,000 is the new average rent in Manhattan. These three factors together have created an abnormally high amount of demand for people wanting to buy homes, meaning there's been a ton of people wanting to go out and buy homes while there's been a small supply. And the reason that we've had a small supply is because of a couple reasons. On one hand, we were and still are facing a major supply chain issue in the housing market, meaning builders are having a tough time securing certain products. You might remember that we had this major spike in lumber prices for a period of time, which made it extremely difficult and expensive for builders to go out and buy lumber to build homes. Then on the flip side of that, we also had and have a labor shortage going on, meaning builders and construction workers are having a tough time finding more workers to help build homes, which has made building homes much more expensive and much more timely, meaning it takes a lot longer to build a home, causing the inventory of homes to stay small. And this has led to the abnormally small supply of homes. So you have a whole bunch of people that wanted to buy homes while well, there's not that many homes available out there for sale, which has pushed home prices up through the roof. I tried to make a joke there, but clearly comedy is not my strong suit. So thank God for whiteboards and YouTube. Over the past few months, we've been seeing this demand start to flip. So now on the bottom of the word, I'm gonna write what's kind of happening now because we've been seeing the demand for homes fall mainly due to the higher mortgage rates. We have seen mortgage rates literally double in the year 2022 alone, meaning if you wanna go out and buy a home today, it is so much more expensive than six months ago or than 12 months ago because not only are home prices so much higher, but now you have to pay a higher interest rate, meaning mortgage rate, to borrow these more dollars. So it's so much more expensive for people to go out and buy homes and people are just saying, well, I don't really want to buy a home right now or pay all this money to buy a home because it is way too expensive. So people are just turning away from buying a home and this has pushed home demand down. And now on the supply side, for the first time since before the pandemic, we have a new report which says that supply is actually starting to go up. So Redfin is a company that does these types of real estate surveys and analysis and studies. And they did a report where they found that now we are seeing an increase in the supply of homes, meaning homes that are listed for sale. So we're seeing that supply is starting to go up while demand has been going down. The interesting thing though is the cause of this new higher supply because you would think that this higher supply is because we're getting new homes built. More homes are being built so we have more homes being sold but the reality according to the study is something different. The reason why we're seeing a bigger supply of homes available for sale now is because of 
the smaller demand. We still have a low inventory of homes being built. However, because people are just walking away from wanting to buy a home, this is leaving homes on the market for longer, and this is increasing the supply of homes available for sale, meaning that all the homes that developers are trying to build and in construction to build, once more homes start to get built, this could also increase the supply even more. But right now, the reason why we're seeing higher supply is just because more and more buyers are walking away from the housing market, leaving more homes on the market for sale. Now, the study didn't cover this, but I also have a feeling that one of the things contributing to this higher supply is also people who own homes that want to sell them kind of having FOMO and now kind of rushing to sell their homes because they're seeing what's going on in the market. If you look around on Zillow, you are seeing price cuts in a lot of markets around the country. And so if you're a homeowner that wants to sell your home, you understand that, hey, the tide might be shifting, the economy might be shifting, and with all the things going on, you wanna still get top dollar for your home. So I have a feeling that there's a lot of homeowners now that are rushing to list their homes, contributing to this higher supply because they wanna be able to sell their home at top dollar before things start to change. This brings us to what everybody wants to know, which is where's the housing market gonna go and what should you be doing especially if you want to sell your home or buy a home now I do want to let you know that if you do want to stay up to date on topics like this in terms of the housing market the real estate market we covered this story in market briefs which is my free financial newsletter if you haven't joined market briefs yet you have to do that it is one of the easiest ways for you to stay up to date on the top finance and business news because every day Monday through Friday and Sunday my team will send you a fun easy to read and witty breakdown of what's going on in the stock market real estate market crypto inflation and global economy you can read this email in less than five minutes every morning and i promise you you are going to look forward to reading this email every morning because of how easy it is and how fun it is to read market briefs and the best part is it's completely free so you got nothing to lose so if you have not joined market briefs yet i'll put the link to hike and join market briefs for free down in the description below in terms of understanding where we're going on the housing market it's really very simple and a lot of people try to make it very complicated because at the end of the day the price of anything from homes to stocks to anything depends on supply and demand. When you have more sellers than buyers, that pushes the price of this thing down. When you have more buyers than sellers, that pushes the price of this, in this case, the housing market, higher. And so what you have to understand is now what's going to contribute to supply, what's going to contribute to demand. Supply is going to be contributed by people wanting to sell their homes or people being forced to sell their homes, aka foreclosures, or more homes being built. So either homes being created, people being forced to sell their homes, or people voluntarily selling their homes. So you wanna pay attention to these three things and how this impacts supply. Then on the demand side, you wanna pay attention to now how incentivized are people to go out and buy a home. Right now, what we're seeing happen is that demand is falling because interest rates keep going up. The Federal Reserve Bank is raising interest rates to fight inflation. And they say that inflation is their number one concern. And so if the Fed continues to raise interest rates aggressively to fight inflation, that's going to continue to push demand down for homes. Now you can start to factor it out. Okay, if demand is going down and if supply is going up, how is that going to affect the housing market? But you also have to understand what could flip demand or what to flip supply because demand can easily be flipped if the Federal Reserve Bank starts cutting interest rates. If we go into a deeper recession, if we start to see more layoffs, if we start to see a crash in the housing market and the Fed gets worried or the government gets worried and they say you need to start cutting interest rates and the Fed then cuts interest rates again, well, that's going to shift demand because then people are going to say, oh, you're telling me I can go and buy a home at a 30-year fixed rate mortgage for 3%? Well, let me go take advantage of that. And you can see a whole nother wave of buyers enter the housing market, causing demand to go up. Again, we don't know what the Fed is going to do. As of today, what we know is that the Fed wants to fight inflation through raising interest rates. But we don't know how long that's going to last. Is that going to last for two months, six months, 12 months, 18 months? I don't know. And this is where it's very difficult to predict and try to time the market because we have this X factor. I like to call it the X factor, which is the Federal Reserve Bank because we don't know what they're gonna do. Then on the supply side, well, you might say, oh, if housing prices now start to fall and people have these adjustable rate mortgages and people go underwater in their homes, we're gonna see more foreclosures. But what we saw happen in 2020 was that we saw a government moratorium which blocked foreclosures. So there's a lot of things that can also affect the supply side that go outside of typical economics. So it's difficult to kind of predict 
where the housing market's gonna go, which is why I don't wanna give a blind prediction because the reality is nobody can predict what the Federal Reserve Bank is gonna do. It ultimately comes down to what they do with interest rates because that's gonna affect this and that's gonna affect this. What the government does is gonna affect this. What the Fed does is going to affect this. So if you, are in the market to buy a home and sell a home, I do not want you to try to time the market because now you are trying to time the market with something that you're not buying for the purpose of making money because your home is something that you're buying to live in, to make memories in, and to raise a family in. And if that's the reason why you're buying a home, then you should buy it because you love the home and because you can afford it, not because of what's happening in the economy. See, if you're talking about buying a rental property, now we can start looking at macroeconomic factors. Now we can start looking at microeconomic factors. We can start looking at how good is this property? How much cash flow is it gonna provide you? What is gonna happen in the economy, your neighborhood, the whole city, the state? What's gonna happen in this area in the next six months, 12 months, five years, 10 years? Then you can start asking these questions, especially for a rental property. But if you're just buying a home to live there, to make memories with your family, and you can get a fixed rate mortgage, well, now the question is, do you like the neighborhood? Do you like the school district? Do you like the area? Do you like the home? Do you want to raise a family there? And can you afford it? If you like it and you can afford it, then don't try to time the market. Instead, buy something that you can afford. That way you're not stressing about the monthly payment. And once you buy it, ignore what's going on in the markets. Ignore what's going on because now you own the home that you live in. And if interest rates drop significantly, just go out and refinance and get a lower interest rate mortgage. That way now you can save money on your mortgage because you don't want to just try to time the market. Instead, you want to make smart decisions for yourself and your family. Cause the price of all assets to drop. Now, assets are things that people buy for the sole purpose of making money. And now when these asset prices drop, it's like Black Friday for investors. Now you can come in, find some of these investments at a discounted price and then ride up the wave, but it requires the patience and it requires the right financial education.